All right, here I am to do um, the next episode, which I think is episode six actually already, of the um, Edith Holden um, Four Season Envelope Folio um, Journal. And it's the summer journal that we're working on. Now, I'm following um, a YouTube series by Tanya Tatty Treasure. Um, which I believe she did at end of last year, and she um, saw this folio being done by Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah. Now, <clears throat> in the last episode, um, I, it was pretty clear that I had done something wrong. So basically, we had two of these big envelopes, kind of A4 UK size, any bit bigger in the US, I think, and overseas. But I had these two big flappy envelopes, so I sealed the flap down and you fold them book style like that. And you have two of those to start with. And the idea being that this would be your front cover and then you glue one to the other um, after making this series of flaps. So this is as far as we'd got. So we had the, the first envelope. We'd If you ignore this one, which I've glued on incorrectly, what I think I did incorrectly from the very beginning was... This flap arrangement, I believe, should have been on this side of the envelope. Instead, I put it on this side of the envelope. So imagine that's the envelope there. I put it that side instead of that side. So I think that's where I went wrong. So the idea was that you'd be able to turn it over and then you'd be able to do that. And I couldn't. So what I had to do, because I then glued this one, the second one, over the side on the top of this underside of this one here, um, <clears throat> realised that I didn't have anything on the back. <laughs> what I then had to do, if this makes any sense, is I had to get another envelope, seal it down, and I stuck it then to the back of this one here. So now... I can open it. I've got my area here to work on and I've got my flap arrangement here. So we've got a pocket here, top pocket. We've got triple pocket. We've got a nice vellum envelope there, um, which, I which I'm going to use and put something in. I made a nice side pocket in this one. Um, and the last time I saw you, we made a big journal card for it, um, which I decoupaged with a lovely uh, summer kind of flower napkin. So I've made that one already, but we haven't finished it. We've got to put the tab on and we've got to do something up there, I think. But that is going to fit inside there. I couldn't finish it in the last episode because I had to let it dry because I used Mod Podge on it. So that's a project to be done, finished. And then we turned it over and we've got a pocket here. This is one of Violet Duran's pockets that she made. And we've got a top and a bottom flip here. So we've got to put something here and here possibly. And then we've got a writing section here. So flip that up. And then underneath here is a writing board that I actually made for previous project. Um, the very first file folio I ever made was an Edith Holden one, and that's well well over a year ago, I'd say. So I hadn't finished this. So what I've done is I've just put some stenciling on the back, put the corners on, and I'd already mod and I mod podged it so that it's you know it's very strong because I wanted to cover up the piece that I've put here to cover this string which goes under there and out the other side so we've got a nice side pocket here that I made and this goes in here so this at the back can be a journaling spot and this can be kept in here and this can be then journaled on with the writing board underneath so um, you don't have this pocket in the way the side tuck then those fold up and that goes back down like so and then it gets tied around here like that which is just a uh, strengthened circle of card really with a um, brad in in between and some string here okay 
so that's how I left it. Then I've stuck this envelope on the back so that I can turn it over and flip it out that way and we've got another area to work on there. So off camera, I've cut out all the mats and what I think will be the envelopes. So that's going to be the front cover there. And then we open this out. We've got this double spread. So I thought, okay, it's a double spread. So let's have a double spread. So we're going to have the double spread here um yeah those are the ones um of the beautiful honeysuckle and dog roses which are beautiful so i've cut that page in half and it will go like that and then we're going to have a, a double envelope flip here um so i've already inked around all of these so that's what we're going to have there and then let's, let's just paper clip those on so that i remember where they go and this one here like so and then that's going to be those okay and then we turn it over and this is going to be the piece for here i love this with the dragonflies so i like that enough to put that on there and then we we'll open this out and i thought let's have another double page spread so we've got this double page spread here and i thought i'm going to use two of the vellum envelopes i bought from tanya at Tetty treasure which i showed you previously so I'll just take those out a minute so that you can see this lovely double page spread here absolutely beautiful so i'm going to have that there and then my idea was to have one i think have one of these here and have one of these this side as a kind of um, nice piece to open. I think that would be nice. But, the, I, but then I'm thinking, what shall I do with these? Shall we have them as top pockets? I think we will have them as top pockets. Um, because trying to put something in and out there would be a bit awkward, I think. Um, we've already got one previous one on the other side like that so i think we'll have double um top pockets for those um possibly have them like this maybe somehow so i don't think i want to put any other envelopes in um i did think about maybe having an arrangement like this so you'd have a double pocket there and because they're only vellum they're very light you wouldn't need a closure to keep them down i don't think they'd flap up and down we could do a double one of those one either side but you know i, I just like this arrangement really best i think i like to keep it fairly simple not too because I don't want to overshadow the country diary of Edith Hold, uh, the Edwardian lady, Edith Holden's book. Um, I don't want to overshadow that really. So they'd have to be kind of, or we could have one up there like that and one down there like that. That would be quite nice. Um, I'm just thinking if, that's down there that could be a top pocket I don't know that I'd want a top pocket there um there would I or would I make it into a side tuck um I'm not sure see if I had them equal on the page they could both be top pockets couldn't they I think we'll go with equal and have them as top pockets right so I want to get them glued down now so I want to get on with this one because we've still got the autumn one to do and then um I think I was at 447 subscribers when I last looked at the weekend so um, as you may or may not know 
well, my idea is to reach 500 subscribers and um yeah i've been quite slow in getting to even 500 um i think it's probably down to the fact that i unlike a lot of the crafters on here i'm unable to do a video every day um even trying to do them in advance and get them up i i can't just manage it i can manage a couple of videos a day over the weekend so i have a friday off of work then i have a saturday and a sunday and between those three days I can manage to get enough videos to go up the following week, but I can't seem to get any further ahead than that. Um, and generally it's a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday kind of videos. So I'm not really creating every day at the moment, um, which is a plan that I, you know, would like to aim for. But it will all happen in its own time. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. That's my philosophy. But I want to reach 500 subscribers and then one lucky winner will be, one lucky public subscriber will be able to choose one of these envelope folio uh, journals. Um, so they can either have the spring, summer, autumn or the winter. And I will show them all at the end. So um, then we will either have reached 500 by then and i'll do the giveaway or we will wait until i reach 500 and then i will put them to one side and then um the person who wins can choose one of these and it will be open to everyone overseas and in the uk okay so i'm going to map these um I'd stick them down. I don't know that you want to see that on camera necessarily. So I'm just going to um, put you on pause and then I'll come back. Everyone, I'm back. So I've, I've glued down the front one, the front mat, which I think is lovely. We will be having some lace down the side. And that, that I'm going to be thinking about the type of closure I'll be putting on. Um, I think possibly it might be um, I don't know yet I have to have a think about that right so we've done the inside so the only part I haven't done is this side with the envelope section here so um, I've found something to map the front and the back of that big envelope and the same with those two so I have only got one piece I think left to ink round so we just ink round this one so this is taking me much longer than I ever imagined um I found this one quite complicated and obviously I did go wrong in the end I think I must have put out such a negative vibe you know <laughs> about worrying about getting it wrong I actually did get it wrong in the end so going to map these quickly I just wanted you to see me do this part really um, so just um, oh give that a clean it's going a bit gunky because we're coming to the end of this one so <clears throat> but I'll you know if there's anything that's coming up to, I always go through them um, with a fine tooth comb before you know I put them up on Etsy or anything like that so I shall make sure that the anything sticking up can get glued down and any shiny areas from this beacon three in one glue will get rubbed off so that should be nice i've just left a little board around that i've left a little board around most of them probably all of them i'd say in one way or another but i like that that's the poppies that's pretty 
And then on this side, we're going to have the, um, I think there's a grouse in, in amongst the heather. That's, that's possibly a scene from Scotland. And this is taken out of the um, Country Diary. Um, hmm, one of those other books that is in the Country Diary format. Um, using some of the pictures from the Country Diary of the Edwardian Lady, but not by Edith Holden. Um, I'm just trying to think which one that's possibly out of. So, um, yes. And while I was talking, I didn't really think about the fact that I don't want to stick this down, do I? So I'm going to have to let that dry now because that's going to stick that whole envelope down. So I'll just leave that over there and we'll stick that one in a second because we want to make this. So this one I think is going to be a side opening and this one is going to be a top one. So we need to shave a little bit off of those. So let's do that now. Just put this to one side. It's quite long. They, they get a bit tricky to manoeuvre on the desk. <laughs> so um, we might as well take that little slither down from there before we while we're waiting for that to dry. So taking that down. And then we'll just ink round this now again. That's fine. So that, that's going to go like that. And then that's going to be a side opening pocket. And obviously it's going to be matted on this side, but all I should have done is glued those bits and not the back of the piece. It's easier to do it that way. Right, so that's that. Okay, and then this one, I thought this would look pretty on the front. I'll keep that kind of envelope. This is some um, two envelopes and cards that I bought from Tanya Tatty Treasure, and they are um, the Country Diary of the Edwardian Lady. And this is the card that will go into this one. And I think I'm going to probably keep it i may stencil this to take some of the white off um and i think we'll just keep that as a card for someone to um perhaps journal on so uh so i want to keep this frame here so i want to put that piece in there i thought that would look really nice that's down that's very pretty i thought i love violets so some growing around the back wild where i take paddy dog and um this they are a deeper deeper color like that they're very very pretty they're in the grass you know um but they are very lovely so that's that side and then this side I wanted to make use of, this again is out of the other book, which is, I think it's um, uh, Country Note, uh, no, um, uh, Nature Notes, not the Nature Notes book, which is by Edith Holden and someone else, um, but the... Um, Nature Notes of a Country Diary, something like that it's called. <clears throat> and it's the planner one, where it has the planner on the back. <clears throat> if you want to plan your garden or, or the cookery notes. There's the other one is the cookery notes, isn't it? <clears throat> then there's the butterfly garden and the bird one. So there's a few of those extra little books that have got images in from the Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady, which I did show you on a recent video, in case anyone hadn't seen them. 
um oh i've done it again that's because i'm talking what an idiot i am look i've just done the whole thing again right so we're gonna have to leave that one to dry now oh such an idiot okay so this one i'm gonna make it to top pocket so while we're waiting for that one to dry i am going to take the slither off of this top here now that is the top yes yeah, so i'm just making sure because obviously if you make one mistake chances are it's highly likely that you make another one if you're me <laughs> oh goodness it's been a disaster hasn't it start to finish right okay so when we map the hat that is going to stick that down so don't worry about that flapping up okay right we just that little bit more distressing right let's see if the other one's dried now enough that it's not going to stick to um anything so let's rub that it's easy to rub with your finger once it's nearly dry so let's do that in the area that i don't want it to stick just to make doubly sure well I'm such an idiot aren't i honestly <laughs> oh goodness me just get the bulk of that off <laughs> okay so right so what we're doing is we're going to glue this area here i'm going to use this because i have a lot of faith in this all staying stuck down with this glue whereas i've gone back to some pieces i've made in the past with some of the other glues and i found that as it's dried out over time um it's all coming up again and i think you know if you're selling things my biggest fear and I was talking about this to a friend of mine. She's got a shop, not Etsy. She's got a furniture. She restores furniture and makes absolutely beautiful pieces out of, um, you know, G-plan furniture and that sort of thing. All the old uh, stuff that nobody really wants anymore. And she's painstakingly paints it, you know, and um, makes things. Oh, she absolutely makes things look beautiful and we both said because she encouraged me to really go for it and open the etsy shop because she went for it and opened her shop um and uh it's a specialized site you know for restored furniture um and um she uh said to me come on I've done it now you can do it and she sold her first piece I mean obviously hers are I think she sold her piece for about 700 pounds something like that absolutely beautiful I mean if I had the sort of house that it could fit in um I would definitely so I've got to glue that end down and I here I'm just making sure because I've made such a yes because that's the made such stupid mistakes today that I don't trust myself not to do it again. So I want to put a bit of glue, bitch the bead all the way down there like that. Okay, and then that's going down like that and then hopefully we haven't stuck the pocket down no you haven't right that, that's one ready to go in okay let's have a look at this one now so do the rubbing and it's mainly this side I just 
one to get it off. It's very easily rubbed off, which is the great thing about it. Yes, yeah, so her biggest fear was that the paint would all come off, although she spends hours doing prep work for it. You know, it's not like some of these bits you find on on the internet that um, or on, on the Facebook marketplace that people just literally put one coat of paint over. Um, so I am going to put a thin bead down here. Yes, it was gorgeous. It was oh, it was. I can't tell you how lovely it was. Um, just going to put a bit under there, and um, we both had this kind of fear about um, things, you know, paint coming off, glue ungluing. If you're selling something and somebody gets it home and it's all coming apart, you know. I don't know why, I just had that kind of fear and funnily enough she had it about paint but uh, hopefully we make sure that doesn't happen you can't predict what's going to happen with things really you know you can't stop the worst happening sometimes um, need to pull that back up a bit actually because I'm not happy with the way that sat there and if this envelope is completely straight right So, again, I've got to put a thin bleed bead, not bleed bead. Oh dear, the pin sticking to my fingers. I must find a topper to go. Well, you know, the bottle's nearly at an end, which is why I haven't really bothered. But, um,. I haven't found that lid. It's most peculiar. It's gone. Never to be found again, I think. Okay, so this is a top loading one. So I just want to gently make sure that that's not stuck down in any shape or form. Okay. Right, so I wanted to use that dragonfly, even though it's got July across the top, which I've now chopped. So I think we'll put something up there just to cover that over so that we can make use of that image because I do like it. So dragonflies on the lily pond. Okay, so bring back our piece and these are going to go under here. So I'm going to glue. Now I wasn't sure, am I going to have them staggered? like that or have one over the top of the other like so I really like that actually but yeah I'm gonna have it like that I think okay so um Let's get this first one stuck down. And then the next video you see on this um, will be the next episode. We'll make some um, ephemera to go in this. And then I'll do some off camera because otherwise it's going to take ages. So that needs to go round about there, making sure I can still open and close it. 
making sure that's as even down there as it possibly can be it's not easy because some of these pages um, and envelopes they're not particularly 100% straight you know and you don't kind of realize that until you start sticking things down so then we want to glue this one down I've really enjoyed making these folios and then we've got winter one left to do and um, that one I'm going to hopefully do in a slightly different um, scenario with the envelopes but um, I'll have to have a look and see because um, uh, I have got a like a private playlist that I've just kept to myself with things I can possibly do where I've seen something and I might have seen it years ago that's the thing um, on somebody's channel when I first before I even started my YouTube channel you know I watched people and um, I'm just going to trim down this one because I'm not happy with that. It seems to me to be slightly um, wider at the bottom edge there. So I just want to shave a tiny bit off if I can. That's much better. Yeah, so I've got to look now for different sort of um, formation, really, or variation of one I've already done, maybe. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for the winter. Um, I've sort of done different, slightly different closures on them. On the spring and the winter one. Uh, aut autumn is the one we've got to do, not winter. I've done the winter, I did that first. So we've got autumn left. Looking forward to doing that one because I love, I love the autumn as well. I think spring and autumn are my favourite seasons out of the four. Okay, so that's much better. I'm happy with that. Right, okay, so I'll just check the pockets. So I haven't put a thumb hole in any of them, which I may do now. So they're quite sturdy now. I'm just going to pin this glue just quickly while I do that before we actually pop them in. So I'm going to hope and pray this is going to play nicely with me today, this corner uh, corner punch, circle punch. So, okay, that's good. It worked. It's obviously I've got to, got to buy a different one, but that is a Fiskars and I thought Fiskars was a very good make, so I'm a bit disappointed in that to be, I have to say. Um, I'm just going to ink behind that little thumb hole there. Okay. And then I wanted to put one in the top here. So this one I will, because it's so obvious, I'm going to measure it um, in centimetres, I think. It's 11 centimetres, so it will be around five and a half that I want to put that little notch in. So I may strengthen the insides of these anyway. That one's fine. It's this front one. Uh, I think we should strengthen it, so we'll get a piece of a uh, strip from Edith Holden's book. I think we'll get a couple of, double that up, and we will 
strengthen that so we don't want to go completely to the edge and then we will do another one the same like that they don't have to be even or anything um, they don't have to be perfect just put that trim that down right I'm just going to glue those together let's take the film off of that I quite like doing that peeling the skin away make sure that doesn't come out too fast so I'm um, just going to pop those together like that just to make it double strength That a few seconds to dry and then pop that in so pop it in that side and I'll we'll use this glue because it's, it's this is the Kalau Tacky which I've been using. I quite like it. I think the last Kalal I had, which I didn't like at all, was really wet and it really didn't like it. It made all the paper pucker up and everything. I didn't like it. So um, I vowed I wouldn't probably would not use that again. So okay, that needs a bit coming off the end. A bit too wide. So um, I saw this on Amazon and I thought, oh, I'll try it. So I'm just popping that in there, just at the top edge like that. So it looks like that, but it's much thicker. sticking down now I'll have to wait for that to dry but I will put a thumb notch in there so I don't think that's going to I'll try it and see but we could ruin the whole thing oh that did work I only wanted a tiny one anyway And that's nice and green in the background, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so it just gives you an indication that that's a pocket. Right. Put that back down. Okay, right. Now we want to pop this whole thing down on this page. And hopefully think about... Um, decorating the front what sort of closure I'm going to have on it I'm just going to stand up. I can actually see. If I want to match the gap at the top as much as I can. And I'm just giving it a burnish by hand with my wet wipe, dry wipe, not wet wipe. Oh, Susan, I think you need to go back to bed, honestly. So, we have our 
thumb notch there and I only did it one side. I'm just wondering, maybe I will do both sides for this one piece. That's good. So we've got that there now. Okay, right. Let's pin the glue wherever the pin disappeared to. Oh, now I've knocked the glue stick over, which doesn't need much much touching to knock it over these days. Right, okay. So that's all ready to decorate. So there we have it. So we open it here and we've got this arrangement in here. That needs gluing down a bit, I think, down the bottom. We've got two pockets here, top pocket and a side loading pocket. And I haven't put any pockets or side pockets in these. Um, we'll put some ephemera on those. So that's what that looks like. Okay, so then we close that down, open that up. And you've got another top pocket here, triple pocket here. Laminated, not laminated, um, vellum pocket here, which is going to be a side tuck for something not too heavy in there it's delicate and that's been stenciled with Tim Holtz flourish stencil and then we've got this lovely page and we've got a side pocket here big one and on the back we've got a pocket here a small slim pocket here and then we've got a flip up and down here and we've got some writing paper here and we've got a writing board in a side pocket here and this can be um, written on if necessary and possibly find a nice little um, notebook we we'll make a notebook I think to go in here somewhere so that's that that goes back down there and that just keeps all of those tidy like so so then we turn it over, that on the back, open that up, and we've got those two vellum pockets there. They look like they need gluing down, don't they? Maybe they should be left like that. Well, that one just a little bit, maybe, of glue. Um, that's how they came, like that. Just glue that down. Oh, yes, coming unglued, you see. Goes back to my theory about things not being glued down or staying glued <laughs> so that I'll glue down so yeah so it doesn't need anything so it's possible that we could still cover this take off the sides and have them aside pocket loading pockets this way put something down here to strengthen all that um, yeah we'll think about that on another video I think these definitely need a little bit more glue underneath them so I'll go around those and yeah I'm, I've tried to make those as equal as possible really so that's that and then we've got the front so yeah it's getting a bit um kind of bulky now so i don't want to put anything too big in but obviously we've got that big journal card to go in this big pocket here that will be nice and then i think i'll think about where we may be able to put in something like um, what's 
something like a perhaps a, a large um, notepad maybe anyway that's it for today so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it wasn't too <sighs> kind of um, what's the word <laughs> ramshackle comes to mind <laughs> it's a nice word isn't it ramshackle <laughs> You know with my getting things wrong but that's it's good to show that we're all only human and we do do make mistakes even on camera so and i tend to make more mistakes on camera than i do off because i think then you're not under any pressure for some reason as soon as that camera starts <laughs> it all goes wrong <laughs> anyway thank you for joining me don't forget you know spread the word with your friends um i'm reaching trying to reach 500 subscribers i haven't got too far to go i'm on sort of 447 or i was when i last looked at the weekend and um you know spread the word with your fellow subscribers um that you know um and see whether they're interested in um subscribing and watching me would be great to help me grow the channel um and uh you know i have got plans to try and increase my video um quota going forward so you know i've got to sort of organize myself and make a schedule out i think to try and plan everything properly but that that you know will come with time and experience I, I still don't consider myself very experienced even though I started channel in 2019 but then we kind of had covid um I didn't really do much with the channel for a long time uh so you know uh, I think probably I've made in total in all that time about well not quite 250 videos so that just shows you I you know haven't been able to make that many videos um certainly not on a daily basis which would be quite nice if i could um but we'll see i'm not going to put myself under any pressure because i really do enjoy doing this i find it extremely relaxing and i don't want that to change you know i i don't want it to become a chore where i think oh no i've got to do a video and you know we had a very busy weekend we've had you know, the weather has been absolutely gorgeous. So on Saturday, we spent most of the day out in the garden. We've bought two new arches for our garden, our two older arches. They're metal ones um, with climbers on. Uh, they were collapsing, you know, they were, they were years old and uh, the metal eventually does perish. So we bought two new metal arches and we put one in and it took us nearly most of the day just to get that sorted out because we had to untangle gently the climbers i said to my husband we must do them now before the climbers we've got clematis and honeysuckle and we've got wisteria which wisteria takes years and years before it flowers and it's been in about five four or five years now and still hasn't flowered but last year it was the most uh, vibe you know the most green it's been in all the time we've had it so I didn't want to disturb it too much and um, so we've had to untangle all those and also on one side I've got a passion flower growing up against the fence and that's going to be trailed over the arch so we've got another arch to put together and then put up in situ the other side we've also got a uh, a line of garden lights all around the fence around the hole over the arches um and across to the next arch and then down the other side of the fence and it looks really lovely when it's lit up at night so maybe when it's finished i'll show you an evening view of what it looks like with the lights on i think it's very pretty it's a bit like fairyland it reminds me of you know when i was a child and we used to go to uh, the isle of Wight, and they had like um place called black gang chine and it they had a, like a fairy land there um yeah it was lovely anyway that's what we've been doing and then on sunday because harry my eldest grandson was 10 on st patrick's day last thursday he had his party uh in a hall 
um, in the village where he lives in Aylesbury um, on Sunday, yesterday. So that started at two. So we went over to that to help out and, you know, be the grandparent presence. And my other daughter and partner and other grandson, Arthur, who will be 10 in June, there's three months between them, and little Maisie, who's our lovely little granddaughter with the rare genetic disorder they were able to drive up and come from Hampshire so it was, it was really lovely to have a little family gathering as well as the party and I'm amazed at these 10 year olds they're so self-assured I think when I was 10 I was trying to remember my husband and I on the way home we were trying to remember what were we like at 10 and I think I still play with dolls at 10 like my Cindy's and Tressy and <laughs> Barbies. <laughs> totally different to them now. I mean, you know, it's all computers, isn't it? And t digital stuff, technology. And, um, it, you know, they're so self-assured. I mean, they practically organised their own games yesterday. And then they had a little mobile disco. And um, he let Harry you know do some sort of DJing and that was really good you know and he's so confident it was amazing it was a lovely afternoon but as a consequence the whole weekend went by in a flash and I hardly got any crafting in really so um anyway I will try my best to do more this week so take care everyone I see you all soon and thanks for jo for joining me and watching this um, I do appreciate it. Honestly, I do. Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Have a good week. Bye-bye.